turn the other cheek. Turn the other cheek. What does turn the other cheek mean? Turn the other cheek means three strikes and you're out. Three strikes and you're out. Now, some of these basic teachings of Robeinu, I and I Rabbi, yeah, Yeshua, yeah, Yeshua, Yeshua Hanotri, who the world calls uh, Jesus Christ or Jesus Christ. Some of us refer to him as Jesse Congo. He was a, a Yehudi, a Yehudi from the hood, yeah, a Yehudi. He was a Jew. Right, speaking in today's parlance, the way we speak nowadays, you know, he was a Jew, Yeshua, our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Hanotri, Yeshua HaMoshiach, was a Yehudi. That means that a lot of the misconceptions, the misinterpretation, the misapplications, some of the basic, some of the basic teachings of Moshe our Messiah, is because people take it out of context. Right? Like in white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Christianity and counterfeit Christianity. And this is one of the main things. Some people say, this is why I can't be, you know, a Christian or a follower of Jesus or Yeshua, so forth and so on. is because of things like to turn the other cheek. Well, how many cheeks do you have? <laughs> We're talking about the cheeks on the face. So it's not being funny now, right? How many cheeks do you have? We have two cheeks, right? There's two cheeks in the face, right? So Yeshua, who the world calls Jesus, but we call him Yeshua, or at best, Jesus, Yesus, Iusu. He was a Jew, a Yehudi, right? He's I and I, Rebbe, Rabboni, Rabboni. Right? Yeshua Hamushi. I and I rabbi, the rabbi of rabbis, our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So the true teaching of turn the other cheek is three strikes and you are out. Because we're gonna look at this statement of Yeshua Hamushi in its true context, right? And reverse the curse, the out of context, you know, misinterpretations, misapplication. Let's remember that Yeshua, right? Ha Adon Yeshua, putting respect on the name. I and I sovereign. I and I Adon Adoni. I and I master Adonai Nu was a Yehudi, and therefore an Israeli, right? An Israelite, a, a Judahite. He, he was not a Pentecostal. He was not a Methodist. He was not an Evangelical. He was not a Protestant. He was not a Catholic. He was not an Orthodox, even in that sense. He was not. He was, he was none of these um, denominations, and he was definitely none of these so-called um, demon nominations. He was not none of these, none of these, none of these. He was not a white Christian either. He was not a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Christian, right? He was a Yehudi, uh, a, a Jew, and... A rabbi, right? Rabboni, Rabboni, I and I rabbi. He was a rabbi as well. That means a teacher, a scholar, and a teacher of Ha Torah, the Torah, right? Yahweh Hayes, Hakadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem, the Holy One, blessed be He, blessed be the name. Abinu Shabbat Shemayim, our Father, right? He is a teacher of the Torah, directions, instructions. Give us a teaching of his divine majesty. We don't want no devil's philosophy. So most of the ideas associated with the whole turn the other cheek, you know, like, oh, turn the other cheek means like you can't even fight back. You just have to just get beat down. And, you know, and the misapplication, too, like in counterfeit Christianity among a lot of the black churches, this was used, right, to actually go against my the truth of the matter and also was misapplied so here 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 first of all let's state this again turn the other cheek means three strikes and you're out how many cheeks do you have all right most people right if you have a face only have two cheeks all right so you smack me on one cheek all right now i'm shocked i'm i'm, I'm hurt probably too i turn to you the other cheek why 
would Rab Raboni, Robainu, why would he say such a thing to us? Well, first of all, we have to define who is the us in just us. Who is the us that he was speaking to? So here, 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 let's do this right here. All right, let's do this right here and let's go to the verse. Let's go to the verse. Here's the verse right here. Here we have it in the gospel according to Matteo. Matteo, Matai, Matteo. All right, according to Matthew's gospel. Matthew chapter 5, verse 39. Now notice when we search out turn and cheek, there's only one verse in the entire right, Bible, right? Speaking about the Bible in the sense of the KJV Bible, the Old Testament was called and the New Testament. There's only one verse, one verse and one verse only. So here in Matthew chapter 5, verse 39, it reads, according to the translation, KJV, but I say to you that ye, that y'all, ye means you all, resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. So the right cheek, now why didn't he just say cheek? He said the right cheek. There's even a point there to be made, but let's just take this basically, right? Basically, whoever shall smite thee. Now here, going from the coiner, right? Right here, we have um, harapizo, harapizo, right? Harapizo, to smite with a rod. Or staff. Now, this is important when we put things in the proper context, right? To smite in the face with the palm of the hand, to box in the ear. Now, repazzo, right, is from a, a derivative from a primary repo, repo, herepo, herepo, which is like to, to let fall. But notice what it says in quotes to rap. Repo, rapo, repo, right? To rap. Now here we're looking at the koina, the koina Greek, the common Greek, the koina Greek, or the copto koina Greek, right? Right? A particular kind of Greek. Right? Here it says from a derivative from harepo, harepo, repo, right? A primary word to let fall or to rap. Like you rap something, like you rapping on the door, rapping like knocking on the door, to slap with the palm of the hand. With the what? The palm of the hand. It's like a smack. Whoever smack you. To smite with the palm of the hand. Getting to the root. Why right, we have tupto. Tupto. Right? To strike, to beat, to smite. Right? Like mourners with like breast beat, you know, breast beat, they have brow beat. Right? Now in the metaphorical sense, because there's the two truths in the Hebrew. There's the two truths. There's the the kind of literal. Right? And the figurative, there is the physical, the natural, right? The heavenly and the higher, the metaphysical, right? The two truths, like the, there is the outer type and there's the inner type. So metaphorically, to wound or to disquiet one's conscience, right? One's conscience, right? Because a lot of ones don't know the difference between the, 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 the plain meaning and like the, the metaphysical meaning, right? In the scripture. Right? They don't have that discernment. It's the, necessary to have that furgan, furgan, I think they call it, a discernment. Right? A discernment. Here, the Strong's definition, a primary verb in a lengthened form, to thump, that is to cudgel or to pummel properly with a stick, bastinado, right? And in other senses, repeat blows, so forth and so on, like a fist. You could go into a different context, a different G entry words, a different context according to, you know, the, the, the verse, looking at the verse. So just zooming in on a word, right? Zooming in on a word so we can get a better context of what is being said here. So now note, this is only the one verse in the Bible, but we have turn and cheek, now, let's look at this verse. Let's go in this verse right here. Let's go into it. It's at verse 39. Let's look at the first verse right here, right? To put it into context, right? Here in Matteo, the gospel, the good news, right? According to Matthew, right? Matthew's gospel, Matthew's testimony, Matthew's testimony. He says it begins off in verse 1, and seeing the multitudes, the multitudes of who? 
Are we speaking to all other kind of peoples? Are we speaking to different Yehudi, Yehudim? We're speaking to different Jews, even we the black Jews, as even we Israelites, and there's other Israelites, other camps, ISUPK, IUIC, GMS, GOCC, there's other different camps, other ones also, Aina, Rastafari, Rastafari, or what Babylon feel like. The true call chosen, the faithful Rastafari are Israelites from the very groundation, foundation. So there's multitudes, a lot of different ones, you know, who we all share some of the basic uh, common denominators, whether as Israelites, right, as Yehudi, as Judahites, as Jews, even we the black Jews, but there's different teachings, different beliefs, different thoughts, different ideas. So he's speaking to the multitude. He's not speaking to the Romans, the Greeks, you right, the, the so-called Phoenicians, you know, the so-called Canaanites, right? He's not speaking to all these other different nations, the Egyptians, you know, he's not speaking to all these other, unless these Egyptians are Yehudi, unless, you know, these other ones are Yehudi, right, are Yehudi, say they're Jews. So he's speaking to the multitude of the Yehudi, of the, of the Bait Yisrael, of the house of Israel, right? So seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set... His disciples, his Talmudim, the Talmudim, those who were of his Talmud. Talmud is the operative word in Hebrew that means teaching. Give us the teaching of his majesty. Give us the teaching of Robeinu, Adunenu, Yeshua, Hamushia. So his disciples came to him, right? And then it says, and he opened his mouth and taught them, them, them. Who's the them? He was speaking to the, so the context here is he's speaking to his disciples, to the Talmudim, in Hebrew, Talmudim, Talmud, his disciple, Talmud, is teaching, right? Give us the teaching of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, because we don't want no devil's philosophies. So the way that most people have been made to be like Eve Right, that the turn of the cheek, what they believe and pretend and make believe, it means it does not mean, right? It does not mean according to what they've been made to believe. Because first of all, the context here is that Yeshua is speaking to his disciples, to those who are in his teaching. So in a sense, he's not even speaking to a lot of these Christians, right? Because it's a question, a big question is whether the Christians are really disciples, Right? They, they're under some belief, some belief, you know what I mean? Don't want to go to hell, don't want to burn up, so forth and so on. But are they really growing in grace and the knowledge? Are they really disciples? Are they in the discipline, that discipline of heart, that discipline of mind? And he opened his mouth, the opening of the mouth. And he opened his mouth and taught them saying, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, a lot of folks go through the constitution. This is the constitution of the kingdom. And they really misunderstand. They misunderstand gravely, you know, what is said right here, here, here. All right. So let's go right here. We're at verse 39. Let's do this right here if we can. Right. And let's actually highlight. Let's go back. Go back a verse right here. All right. So here, scrolling up. Now, you notice all red letter. It's all red letter. Red letter means that he's still speaking, right? He's talking about bars, right? He's going through all his bars, right? All the bars, all the verses. Okay, here's, here's what we're going to do right here. We're going to compare, right? Compare right here to get the Hebrew of it. So here we have Ashre, Ashre, Eneni, right? Enine, Enie, Enie, Ashre, Enie, Haruachakialahem. Malkut Hashemayim, Ashrei. Now the Ashrei means happy if you study Hebrew Ashrei. But many places in KJV is translated as um, blessed. Baruch, Baruch is the blessed they confound with this. Ashrei is happiness. Now remember, happiness is not a feeling, it's a state of heart and mind. Because you can have that true kind of happiness even in the most difficult of times, right? The happiness, that happiness, right? So happiness, the real happiness is not a feeling, it's a state of heart and mind. In fact, in the first psalm of um, Dawit, in the Sefer Tehillim, Mesmur Dawit, in the Psalms of David, the first psalm that reads, Blessed is the man that walk not in the council of ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seas of the scornful, right? That happy there's ashrei, there's a peace of heart and mind in the innermost of the innocents, 
right? That that peace. This is how you rule in the midst of your enemies. There's a peace. So it says, Ashrei Eniye Eniye Ashrei Eniye Eniye from Ani 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 or Oni. Right, onie. Some may say ashere onie, ashere onie from onie, like the poor. Right, poor. How are they poor? Are they poor? See, some people will say, well, see, if you're poor, you know, you don't worry about money or anything like that because you can be happy. Right, that's not what it's talking about. See, the context is poor in spirit. Right, onie, 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 haruach, haruach. Right, it says, bless all the poor in spirit. They're the humble in their spirit. In their spirit, they're not too proud in their spirit. They're humble in their spirit. Ashrei niye haruach. Ki for lahem, lahem to them malkut, the kingdom, the government, the kingdom malkut ha shamayi. So here we're speaking of uh, Hebrew, right, and Yehudi Judaic spirituality. Check check right so like here let's go over here right here right let's take it back take it way back right so now let's scroll down here so we know the context this whole chapter here in chapter five the whole context of everything that he's saying he is speaking to his disciples oh let's just do that right here just in case ones and ones might want to say something else let's put it in context once again and seeing the multitudes he went up into a mountain and when he was set his disciples, so he saw a bunch of people, right? A bunch of people. Could be a motley crew. He saw a bunch of people. And he went up into what? He went up the great masses of people. Some translation, all the crowd, the crowd of people. Here, 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 he breakly, why he, ki, re, oto, ki, re, oto, re, oto, he, ra, ra, to see, ki, for, re, oto, eta, Hamon, eta hamon, hamon, like hamon, hamon, multitudes, like nuff, nuff ones, right? Hamon, ha'am, ha'am. He saw the multitudes, the hamon, ha'am, hamon, ha'am. The multitudes of the people, why ya'al, why ya'al, and he aliyed, and he went up, why ya'al, why ya'al. Ha, ha'ra, ha, ha'ra, ha, ha'ra, ha, ha'ra. Into by right, the hara hara hara. All right now we have to be very careful about the pointing, right? Because mispointing it means one by miss saying it, right? So some of the other Israelites they teach this thing called lashan kadash, where they say Hebrew only has one vowel. That is, that, that that is not true. That that's not real ancient Hebrew. Hebrew have seven primary vowels, seven primary tones, right? So here where it says why yeshep. Now, why Yashab, right? Here we see why Yashab. Let's bring that like that. Why Yashab? Some might say modern Hebrew, Vayashev, Vayashev, Vayashev in modern Hebrew. Ancient Hebrews, Vayashab, Vayashab, Wa and Yashab, Yashab. And when he was seated up, as I and I Rastafa said, when he was seated up, when he sat up, when he was seated, Vayashab, Sham, Sham. When we seated up there, Yashab Sham, right? Yashab Sham. When he was seated up there, why Yigashu, why Yigashu, why Yigashu, you see right there, why Yigashu, right? Why Yigashu, right? Elio Talmidayo, right? And to him, Nagash. See this word here, why Yigashu, let's just highlight that, bring that down. Um, some might say Vayikshu, Vayikshu, modern Hebrew Vayikshu, Vayikshu, ancient Hebrew Vayikshu, Vayikshu Elayo Talmidayo, Talmidayo. So they right hear the word for disciples, right? Right? To say his disciples, Talmidayo, Talmidayo, right? To say Talmudim is to say disciples, right? Talmudim. Here to say Talmidayo is to say his disciples. So who was Yeshua HaMoshiach speaking to? And this is why most of the Christians and folks that be dabbling in the Bible, they may point to the verse and they get all sort of miscontextual, misinterpretation, make be like Eve, right? And they preach a fake gospel. 
Beware of the fake gospel, the fake gospel, so many fake gospels. Even Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, even said, many shall come in my name. And they come in Jesus' name, according to translation, right? And what deceive many. So many of us have been deceived and many of y'all are still deceived, thinking that he's just speaking to everybody, right? Or he's speaking to even the so-called uh, Christians, right? No, he is speaking to his disciples, why ye geshu elayo talmidayo. Now, modern Hebrew, they'll say it as, Vayigshu elav talmidav. In modern Hebrew, Vayigshu elav talmidav. But the ancient pointing is, Vayigshu elayo talmidayo. All right, so this is very, very important right here to get the true context of this particular verse. So he was speaking to Talmudayo, Talmudayo, his Talmudim, the Talmudayo. And he opened his mouth and taught who? And taught them, uh, them. Uh. So the opening of the mouth here, the Hebrew opening of the mouth, he opened his mouth and taught them. So this whole chapter in Matteo, in Matthew's gospel, the gospel according to Matthew, Right, this whole chapter, chapter five, is where Robenu, I and I Rabbi, Robenu Yeshua Hanotri, right, who's known as Ha Adon Yeshua HaMoshiach, Yeshua the Messiah, he is speaking to his disciples. See, there's a big difference between being a disciple and a so called Christian, especially nowadays. Right? Especially nowadays. In fact, the original name of the disciples were Nazarene because he was known as Jesus of Nazareth. Yeshua Hanotri. Hanotri. So now here, let's scroll down here. Let's go all the way down here. We're scrolling through here because you can see it's all red letter, red letter. So this is a consistent, this whole chapter here is a consistent teaching. A consistent teaching. So here, let's get to this verse right here. Here is verse 39. 39. So he is speaking to his clique to say it in a way that the youths, the young and of this generation can best understand it in its true context. He's speaking to his set, his clique, right? His crew, you can say. He's speaking to his disciples, right? Because rabbis, right, or scholars of Torah had their disciples, and Yeshua is our rabbi. So even we, the black Jews of the lion of the tribe of Judah, our rabbi. Rastafari, Rabbi, Rabbi, our rabbi is Yeshua HaMoshiach. My rabbi is Yeshua HaMoshiach. All right? Now, many would tell you, oh, we don't have rabbis because, well, Yeshua is our rabbi. We can show you where those who are of the Talmudim, the disciples, right? Even Mariam Magdalawit even called him Rabboni. And it's there many times, but the translator sometimes puts it in, sometimes they don't. This is why we study to shoe ourselves approved, right? So verse 39 says, but I say to you that ye resist not evil. So he's speaking to his set. It's like, I'm, I'm, let's put it like this. He's like a gang leader, so to speak. Yeshua HaMashiach is like a gang leader. And he's speaking to his clique. He's speaking to his posse. He's speaking to his crew. And he's saying, well, this is what you are to do. These are the rules. These are the regulation, right, for one and another. Here it mirrors and reflects the Brit Shana, what's known as the Old Testament, the Brit Shana, right, in the Hebrew Old Testament, where we have Yahweh, he, right, Hashem, right, Yah, Yahweh, ja, Jehovah, speaking to the Bnei Yisrael, the sons of Israel, and to the Hebrews, right, the Hebrews and the sons of Israel, and saying to them, speak unto the children of Israel. All right, so the context, a lot of times these one these these fake gospel, fake good news people out there that call themselves Christians, they'll draw a verse and they'll like take this verse and they'll read it and then they'll freestyle off of it. Right? And they'll make up their own kind of stuff. They'll insert their own kind of ideas. And they'll be believable, be liable. But then if you ever take the time to really um if you ever take the time to even study it for yourself, if you take the time to really look at the chapter, this is something that we did and we're so happy. You know, Toda la Adonai, la Adonai, right? We give thanks to him, to Haile him, to the power, the true good, true God, that we were able to hear the small, still voice of truth and 
follow up on some verses that we heard people preaching on. And we said, oh, that's, yeah, 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 yeah. Then we said, what, what verse is that? We went, we looked it up and we read the verse. And then we said, man, this verse is so interesting. Let me read the whole chapter. And then after reading the whole chapter, we said, oh my goodness, this person is a liar, deceiver, just like Yeshua said. He said, many shall come in my name and deceive many. We come in a new name, precious name, right? New name, rise to far, but they shall come in my name. So many have been coming in Jesus name and deceiving many of us, right? But I say to you, right? So who's the you? So when we look at this in the Hebrew, he's like saying, but well, I'm saying to you all, I'm saying to y'all, right? That ye that y'all resist not evil. Now, see, the evil has a context, too. Here is poneros, poneros. Poneros can be full of labors, annoyances, hardships, toils. It's interesting that some, when they talk about good and evil, they have a kind of a Christian sense, even though they admittedly will say they're not Christian. But even though you come out of the Christian church or you don't deal with that, you still have it in you. You know, you came out of Christian church, but you have a lot of these Christian misconceptions in you. Right, you truly haven't been, you know, as they used to say, the great unwashed. You haven't been washed, all that filth hasn't been washed off you. So one of the meanings of poneros, right, from the Koine Greek, right, can be bad, like the word ra, 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 right, a bad nature, bad condition, physical in a physical sense, to be diseased or blind in a sense was considered to be evil. Not that the person necessarily ethically did something evil. But that's like less than what it should be, less than the fullness, right? Less than what it should be. So like a person who's crippled, handicapped, or has some other, this, that thing that is affecting them is not good. It's not the way it should be. But it's not saying that because the person has that disability that they did something. That question was brought to Rovainu as well. You know, when it says like, well, this man, you know, he's in this condition. Did his mother or father or somebody else do something because he had this kind of like, Kind of like other nations, other Eastern spiritualities believe that, well, if you're in this situation, it's because your ancestor did something. And there's something to that, but a lot of that has been taken out of context as well. So bad, right, or evil, right, don't you resist evil. We have to first define what evil is and not go off of, see, here is where the Hebrew connects with the Copto, the Coptic coin, the Greek. Right. So even though it's in the Greek, it was Hebrew speakers. Right. Those who had the Hebrew intel that knew we had to. It's like I'm speaking most of this in English. We could speak it maybe in Hebrew or in Amharic or something. But we're speaking most of this in English. Why? Because most of the listeners, most of the target audience is English speakers. So the same thing. So when we see the New Testament written in Greek, we say, oh, that's Greek. It's not Hebrew. Right. But then the same hypocrites, right, the so-called pseudo black con, the black conscious kind of these cats and everything, even they themselves might talk about ancient Kemet and Egypt. They can't speak a full sentence like that. They, they don't they don't know it like that. They're speaking to you even what they're speaking to you in English, too. And many of them have wrote books. Some write books and they write the books in English, too. So let's get out of the hypocrisy. Right. You know, the hypocrisy. Let's not be poor thinkers, weak thinkers. Be hoodwinking, bamboozled by every slight of argument, slight of reasoning, right? Strong's definition, just getting to poneros, also brings out the hurtful sense. That is evil. So, see, what is happening is that people are deep ending on the translation and not even studying the context of the translation. So, the verse could have said, resist not that which is hurtful. Resist not that which is bad. Because every day we're dealing with good, bad, and ugly, you know, all kinds of situations every day, right? And you got to push through even a negative or a bad situation, even a hurtful situation. Sometimes somebody does something, say something that's hurtful to you, right? And you can't just jump out of the penthouse window on that. You know what I'm saying? You can't just jump out the window on that, right? And by not doing that, you know, you're able to somehow overcome that, even bring your brother or sister to their senses because it's your brother or sister. 
So that's why I keep emphasizing that Yeshua HaMoshiach is a Yehudi, is a Jew, right? Even as we, the black Jews, and he's speaking to his Talmudim, Talmudayo. He's speaking to his disciples. He's not speaking to the so-called Pentecostal church, to the so-called Methodist church, the Episcopalian church, the, the evangelical church, the Protestant church, the Catholic, Eastern, Western, Northern, whatever. No. He is speaking, it says here, to his disciples. Now, if in any of these churches, Pentecostal, Episcopalian, Evangelical, Methodist, uh, Roman Catholic, Orthodox, whatever, if there are those who call themselves Christians who are truly disciples, then that word applies to you too, right? So the context is important. Right. This is why we are zooming in right here, taking that time. Look, this word also can mean degeneracy, degeneracy. Right. So that's degenerate. Sometimes we may have people in our family. They be doing all kind of degeneracy activity. Or we may be the people doing degeneracy activity that there in a basic. Right. The Shua HaMoshia rabbinical sense is considered to be evil. Right. But we have to get a better context, get off this Hollywood by this white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, this whitewash, this white man make-believe stuff that you see in the movies, you know, all this kind of crazy stuff that people watch in the movies, right? Degeneracy, see what it says? From original virtue, from the original strength, right? Figuratively, calim uh, uh, calamitous, sometimes calamitous, like a tragedy, right? In a passive sense, ill. Illness was considered to be evil. It didn't necessarily mean that you are necessarily an evil person, but your health is not in a good sense, so therefore it's in a bad sense, therefore it's in an evil sense. That is to say, it is in a dis-ease sense. You're not in a sense of ease no more. You're in a dis-ease sense, right? Especially, right now, when we look at it from more of the religious um, aspects, uh, you know, the spiritual religious aspects, right? Morally. You're culpable. Morally, you're guilty. Or you're derelict. Something that you were supposed to do, you didn't do. Or it could be in the sense that you're vicious. Right? That's your brother right there. Why are you feeling that way about your brother? You're vicious. Right? Um, fractionous. Right? Fractionous. Uh, fra fracinorous. I gotta look this one. Like, no, like fractionous. Like you're, you're divisive in that sense. Right? Mischief. So sometimes we're reading the King James Bible and we'll come across something like mischief or malice. And in the Hebrew, right, from the Hebrew or even the coin of Greek that the Hebrews and the black Jews spoke and wrote in to the other people who did not have strong, strong roots in Hebrew, right, but they were Hebrews and Israelites, it's translated as mischief. So the same word that he is evil, so you hear people making these foolish arguments. Well, King James over here says it's, it's mischief. Mischief is not evil. But then when we do a little bit of study to show out some proof, we say, chant. The bottom line word there in Hebrew or in the Greek is the same word as used over here. So see, we have to learn to think different. That's what it says, repent for the Malku Tashamayim is here and now it's on. The kingdom of heaven is in your midst, but you don't recognize it because of ignorance. Ignorance right, is the original sin. The original sin is ignorance. All right. Remember who told you when you get to recognize that it's true, right? Mischief, malice, guilt, all that is evil, right? In a certain other sense, once we get into New Testament, the devil, Satan, or sinners, in that sense, ones who fall short from what is good, right? So anything that falls short of what is good. Right now, if we're in archery or we're throwing darts and we're going to hit the bullseye, and you hit the bullseye, and I fall short of it. In a, con, a comparative contrast sense, it's like that was bad of me. I fell short. In a sense, you could use the same word as evil in the original languages, right? So bad, evil, grievous. Sometimes grievous, right, is evil. Sometimes harmful or hurtful is evil, right? Is lewd, malicious, wicked is evil. So it's a very interesting context, right? Poneroteros, right? Poneroteros, like more evil, like, well, more wicked, more bad, like continuing to do bad stuff. So it says, resist not. Resist not. Because see, in life, if you run away from every ill, hurtful, bad situation, you know, you really can't. 
You really can't. Like, like, like right now, if, if, if your health is not as it was the other day and it's a little less than that, you, 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 instead of resisting it or pretending like it's not there, you have to deal with it and try to make it better. Right? So let's understand the context of Robeno's words. But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. Turn to him the other cheek also. So here, 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 let's get into the Hebrew right here. Now there's a little two different, slight different readings right here. Wa'ani Omer Lakem. Wa'ani, wa'an ani, and I, Omer, 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 I say Lakem to you all. So once again, he's saying not to one, but to you all. Alatita Komemu, Alatita Komemu, Tita Komemu. Right? Not to resist, like like to stand up and like oppose, like I gotta oppose this. And it's interesting, right? La Rasha, La Rasha, La Rasha, right? La Rasha. Now here in the first one on top it says the wicked, like the wicked one. Down there it says La Ra'a, La Ra'a, like La Ra'a, right? Not to resist. See, just to bring that out right there. Not to resist evil. Right, but it says right here, it says, with Hamake, with Hamake, with Hamake, with Hamake, Make, Mecca, Maka, Maka, like to hit Hamake, Hamake, Otika, Otika, whoever strikes the, the eye. So, here, now this is interesting because here, even looking at the Hebrew, right, here Yeshua is speaking. To it, Lakem. Lakem means you all. Like he says, Shalom Lakem. Lakem, peace be to you all. He's speaking to Lakem. But then when he gets into the actual, you could say, the, the meat, the context, the inner part of it, he's speaking to each one individually. And this is something that those who have studied the Hebrew scriptures, especially the Old Testament, Barit Shana, will see this over and over again, where it begins, oh, speak to the children of Israel, like speak to, speak to all of them. And then say to them, and then what is said to them is individually. So it's like a corporate sense. It's speaking corporately. Like say to all the homies, and then in the language, speaking to them individually. So speaking to all of us as one man. Wehamake, wehamake otika al ha lechi, al ha lechi, al ha lechi, al ha lechi. Whoever strikes you like on the cheek, ha ye manit, ha ye manit on the right cheek, right? Ha te, ha te, ha te, ha te, ha te lau, ha te lau, ha te in the Hebrew means like to turn, ha te, or to incline, to incline. You ever seen that among homies? Like my homie, we all in the same thing, the same set together. We brothers. But right now my homie's upset and he smacks me on my cheek just in front of everybody just like that. And I'm like, what? I said, go ahead, go ahead. And then I turned the other cheek to him. Right? Okay, that's the first strike. Hit me again. The second strike. Right? Third strike, you out. Right? In other words, that was a way of saying, listen, I'm not going to even hit you back right now. I'm not going to even do nothing right now. Like, yo, go, go. You going to hit me again? Or you see that it's basically to, to promote and prompt in our brother. This happens so many. I've seen this among homies. I've seen this among ones and ones that would say, nah, man, if the white man is not talking about the white man. See, that's why a lot of people get this confused. A lot of so-called pro-blacks and other pseudo-conscious community, the rest of them cats, you know, oh, silly Sarnetta and the rest of them. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that. Right? It says, ha te la wu gam. Et ha achret, et ha achret, et ha achret. Turn to him the other. And when it says turn to him, the ha te is interesting. The ha te, that's this word right here. Actually, it's two words right here. It's ha te lau, ha te lau, lau. Turn to him. Turn is saying to incline to him. Because we can show you this same verse in the Old Testament or the same word, the same word, hate, 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 hate is like to incline. And it's usually you sometimes say like to incline your ear to me. Oh, ja, incline your ear. 
right, to incline your ear, like you lean your ear, like you lean your ear towards something. Like somebody is saying something, you want to hear it, so you lean your ear towards it. So my fellow disciple, my fellow brother, right, smacks me on my cheek, right, either literally or it could be a figurative sense. In a figurative sense, he might say something that's like a smack. So now I incline to him. I turn to him the other side in the sense of like a like I incline to him. Like what? what? What you mean? I want him to bring out more of what he says. Right? Here. I'm not gonna just just strike back at you, right? Because you're my brother, you know. And this goes on among brothers. And remember that we're speaking here about the Nazarenes, right? The Talmudim, the Nazarene, the Talmudim, the disciples of Ha'adon of the Lord, the Master, the Sovereign, Yeshua, HaMoshiach, of our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, the Bain Elohim Chaim, the Son of a Living Power. All right. So the context right here, all right, let's see what they say right here. Whoever's turned to him, the other also as well. It's not in the sense like people think like, oh, this is just to get beat down. I mean, look at the whole Esau and Yaakov situation. Right, even all the things that Esau and the Edomites have done to us as the Bene Yisrael and as the children of Jacob, right? And still, even Ha Torah, right? Even what the Egyptians did, at least one set of them at the time of the Exodus, you know, there was good and there was bad and it was ugly. The Exodus was definitely the bad to ugly phase of our relationship with the Mitzrayim, with the Mizraim, the Kemetic. Right? You know, like there's good governments and bad governments. It's good times and it's bad times. This is one of those bad times. But even Ha Torah says that we are not to abhor, right, you know, the Edomite, right, because he's our brother, or the Egyptian because we were stranger in his land. This don't mean that everything they do is right, but we're not to have that disgust for them. Right, that disgust for them. So how be it if we don't have the disgust for these others who have done us some dirty Right? From time to time, even the best of brothers, the best of friends, they have gone through ups and downs. Y'all know if you have any good friends, if you have any real friends, you know that sometimes there's been those times. Right? And instead of you just going all harm, all harm on them, you, in a sense, incline to them the other. You incline to them the other cheek, in other words. But it didn't say to keep on getting smacked. This is our point right here. Right, like it says, if any man will sue thee at the law, at the law is talking about at the Torah, right? At the Torah, let's put this in context right here, here, here. At the law is talking about at the Torah, right here. Let, let's see if this is right here. Whoever sues thee, sues thee at the law, right? At the law, what do we do? Let's see, let's see right here. We're looking through the verse right here. Whoever sues thee, like has a con, uh, a, a content. Right, a content. What yachpot? Yachpot. Let's see, yachpot. La rib, la rib. What the the word? They don't say literally Torah right here, but rib. Rib is like is like having a contention, like based on the the John's direction instructions. You know, say the hot Torah. Right, you have a controversy, a controversy with your brother. Right, and take and take and take away thy coat. Let him have thy cloak also. That's how brothers deal with it. All right, it's cool, it's cool. This is, this is my fam right here. And even though I think he's off right now, he's going to have to recognize this. But you're not going to keep taking, beating down. Remember, it says, turn to him the other. After he says, turn to him the other. Look what it says right here. Whosoever shall compel thee. Whosoever among the Talmudim, your brothers, those who are in the same discipline, compel thee to go a mile. Go with him twain. This is why Yeshua HaMoshiach, Rabbeinu, says, you know my disciples by how much love they have one for another. So others will see that even though sometimes we go through our disputes, our differences, we work it out. We still have a love for, for one another, right? For the fellow brothers, because we know our master, our big brother, and we know Elohim Ha'ab. We know Ha'ilahim, the power, our father, Binu Sheba Shemaim. Right, right. It says, give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Right, turn not thou away. Right, don't turn away. Even this part where it says, you have heard that it hath been said, thou shall love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. You see, because 
okay, let's take black people, the lost sheep, for for example. Our biggest enemy, right? Who's 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 our biggest enemy? Who's our biggest enemy? Some would say the white man. No. See, see, that's a poor thinker right there. Our biggest enemy is really our own darn selves. Right? That's our biggest enemy. So after you turn one cheek, after you turn the other cheek, how many other cheeks can you turn? You can't. You can't. That's what we say. Turn the other cheek. Right? Turn the other cheek. Right? The third time you're out of here, like three strikes and you're out. Three strikes and you're out, right? Three strikes and you're out because you only have two cheeks. So there's a, there's a limitation to how many cheeks. He didn't say strike you on the right cheek. Remember, he said right cheek turns on the other. You're going to have a left cheek, right? You don't have another cheek, and we're not talking about no ass cheek. I mean, just let it be plain because some folks are out there, you know, their mind go there. You know, okay, your mind can go there, but let's keep it on the higher heights. Let's keep it in the right context of what's being spoken here. Turn to... Him, your brother, your brother, the other cheek. Okay, even among the disciples, even among the best of brethren, even among a gang, a clique, a crew, we all are in the same stuff together. We do the same stuff together. We are caught by the so-called um, um, authorities and principalities. They will throw us all together, right? We even have our differences. And notice that in any clique or crew where there sometimes are differences, a well-maintained clique or set learns to resolve those things among fellows, among brothers, right, without extreme violence. And sometimes one have to take a little bit of something. My brother the other day just jumped out the window on me on something right there. You know, he said some things. I was quiet. You know, I, I, I basically inclined to him the other. Hot low. Right? He kept going on. I had to I had to fire back on him. So we back and forth. Right? And I told him, like, yo, bro, yo, bro, you, you misunderstand. You know what? I'm out. I told him I'm out. He said, he said, good, good. You know, he was on that level there. And so I hung up couple of days, like, you know, I think it was a day or so. It was like the next day or so and everything like that. I saw a message. I checked out his message. You know, we reasoned about it. Still, we didn't come to a complete resolution because another person was involved, right, on this particular thing. Not no woman or girl, but it was another, you know, brethren and brethren sometimes have brethren things. You know what I'm saying? Disagreements, right? But that is what is meant there. Now, some ones would say, even though we both are Rastafari, I can, I can even go further and say we both are Black American Rastafari. So we share a lot in common. Often I've seen these Yardies do that. They have their differences. They talk a lot of stuff. Now, blah, yo, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? And then look a lot for that. It usually, especially if there's a, a core value, if they both are like Rastafari on that level. Just to say what Babylon feel like, Rastafari is like. So they have that core love, right? That's what he's saying here. That's why he says that, you know, others will know that you're my disciples. So when you see all these counterfeit Christians fighting each other and killing each other, I mean, you don't see that even happen. Notice this. Even the Latter-day Jews, even the so-called ones, I said the white Jews, the Khazar and Ashkenazis, you know, so forth and so forth. Even you don't even see that amongst them. They be having some big differences amongst them. They be having some big difference. You don't even see the white Jews fighting and killing out each other. You, you don't see that. A lot of times, the, see, because these principles are ancient principles. Right? These principles are ancient principles. Even when the Moshiach, the Moshiach was bringing forward again the real teaching that some of the Rebbeinah, the, ra, the, the Rabim, some of the preachers and pastors like today, today's preachers and pastors not preaching that old time, we could say Negro gospel, Right, that helped to free us up, right, from slavery, right, help us to fight back when necessary. This doesn't say that we can't fight back, right? But imagine this we have all this fight, mm hmm. We have all this fight for one another. I mean, I mean, look at black folks for a moment. I mean, look at the lost sheep, or look at the lost sheep of the house of Israel for a moment. They talk about. Defund the police, right? Dot, dot, dot. Then they say, right? Then they say, call 911. Dot, dot, dot. And then they say, the cops don't care about us, right? See, this is a symptom of black mental health, black mental health issues, black mental health disorders. 
I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Okay, let me let me put it like this right here, right? Right now, right in the ghetto, in the ghetto, right? Uh, you know, in the hood, there's not really so many hoods now. With gentrification, gentilification, with gentilification, they call it gentrification, but really it's gentilification. But remember, Yeshua spent a lot of time in the Galilee, mm -hmm. Galilee of the Gentiles. Right in a gentrified community. Now I, I kind of know why. Because when you're in the black neighborhood, the black hood, right, a lot of wickedness, a lot of madness goes on. Sometimes you know that one homie killed the other homie, but nobody's snitching, nobody's telling. Right? Sometimes you know a little small violation, a little small thing. Man, a man gonna pull out them ratchet, pull out them tool, pull out them hammer, pull out the iron, whatever you want to call it. You know, and bang, 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 right? And kill each other, right? And so we know that that killing was wrong, 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 but we let it pass. We turn the other cheek all the time to the wicked, the ratchet stuff that goes on. Then, popo or something happens, and we're not trying to incite nothing, just pointing out something, right? Come into the community, or something happened with a black person, and the first thing y'all now do is write up a whole bunch of signs, and you go out there and protest, and talk about you can't breathe, and please, Mr. Police Officer. You know, all this kind of nonsense, right? All this, and then looting and burning down your own communities. Think about it for a moment. See, that's also another symptom of black mental health disorders. That's a black mental health issue. Remember we say that our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, he's a savior. He's a savior of our souls. He's here to give our souls, our psyche. The soul is the psyche, right? Here to help out our psychology out, right? Because they wanted to get the Romans up off of them. How could they ever get the Romans up off of them when they didn't have the same basic prerequisite love that the Roman soldiers have for one another, right? And we're not talking about the homosexual stuff. Don't even go there, fire bun that. We're saying that the Roman soldiers, soldier to soldier, a lot of times a next soldier say something to you, so forth and so on. You're not going to take out your, 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 you know, out of the scabbard, your dagger. You're not going to take out the dagger or whatnot like that and, and, and jerk him to death. You're not going to do that. And if you did that, they probably would kill you. They probably would hang you because you went too far. You went too far. Right? You have a little dispute, whatever, dispute, fight, you know, but, but, or, or dispute it. When I say fight, like argue it out, right? And then you go to your commanding officer and commanding officer, listen to both sides and say, okay, I hear that. Well, forget this is done. It's over. And it better be done. When you're on the battlefield, you can't be like, well, I'm, I'm not going to help this other soldier out because the other day he said something to me. No. You're going to focus on the battle. You're going to focus on the strategic goal and you're going to overcome the enemy. So what Yeshua, how Moshe was seeking to do, they wanted like, oh, they wanted some spookism. They wanted to see something strange and extraordinary. What he was teaching was some basic values, some basic virtues, some basic strengths, right? That we really need that brotherly love amongst ourselves. We need a righteousness amongst ourselves that even when something evil or bad, how many times among black groups and organizations and, and different things that we do, right? Or try to do, or attempt to do, as soon as some so-called evil, bad, ill, harmful thing, or somebody goes off, everybody's ready to jump ship. All the rats, all the rats are ready to jump ship. But then they be in America for 400 plus years and sometimes things are good, but most times things are bad, right? And they still, oh, it's election time. We better go out and vote. We better vote or die. You know, all this kind of stuff. So you're still believing in the bad system, the slave master system, right? But then when you do your own thing, y'all can't even have the organization or the thing last a generation. It can't even last past a generation because now, oh, I, I'm out of this organization, because they're having a little problem. Instead of being able to so-called proverbially turn the other cheek and get to the root of the matter through brotherly love. You know, if you're in a family, I'm going to seal up on this point. Oftentimes in the family, right, there's things that happen among brothers and sisters and brothers and brothers and sisters and sisters in the family. But the thing that seems to hold you together is that you'll have either mother and father right, in common, or mother or father in common. And because you have mother or father in common, it helps you to endure and overcome a lot of evil, a lot of ill, malicious, mischief, so forth and so on. 
because y'all have mother or father. How many times brother and sister or brother and brother and sister and sister have some difference and maybe one is really wrong, the other one was innocent and the victim of this and the mother or father would tell them, all right, they'll listen, hear you out. They say, squash that. Forget about that. Hug, love each other. You know, forget we family, we family, we family. Miss Pacha, Miss Paca. You know, we family. We have the same family. Beit Ab. We have the same family and therefore... Being of the same family, we got to stick together. We got to stick together, right? And we know that among certain families, even some gang families and mafia families, we see that a lot there. And I have to tell you, brothers and sisters, that's one of the secrets, right, of, I say their success. I'm not condoning the bad, the violence, the ill, and the other thing that they do to other people. But notice, they may do this to other people, but they... If, if they do it to themselves, it's going to be locked down. It's going to be dealt with in the most harshest way because they're like, yeah, even if that happened, we still are family. What's wrong with you? What's wrong? Why you did that to him? Why you smacked him on the cheek? Right? And he turns to you the other cheek and you smacked him again. Yo, it's serious now because now there's no recourse. Right? Turn the other cheek, three strikes, and you are out of here. And you know what? You want to keep doing it? It has a limitation. There is a limitation, right? There is definitely a limitation, right? In our father's house, right? In our father's house. Because the law, right? According to the scripts, the law is our mother, right? The Torah is our mother. Wisdom is our mother. We have to be wise, brothers and sisters, right? So here, 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 just addressing this uh this controversial, it's not really controversial, just that people are looking at it out of context, right? That's why even Yeshua HaMoshi, even after all that happened to him, according to the Bible, according to the narrative, right? He said, forgive them, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. People th think he's talking about just the Romans. No, the Romans come after, he's talking about the Israelites, he's talking about those who betrayed the rats, the rats, right? Like, like his chariot, you know, and others, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing, right? And even some of the ones and ones who should have been really out there and about there, they wasn't, right? And he forgave them, right? That's why I say that Yeshua HaMoshe, he died for our sins. He didn't die for our sins in this counterfeit Christian sense, right? He died because we, the black Jews, the Yehudi, the Yehudim of the first century, right? By and large, we sinned against him. Right? We wanted to kill an innocent man, a man who only did good. To want to kill somebody who only did good, who want the best for you, who want to heal you, that is a sin. That is evil. Right? And he forgave us even that right there, there, there. So how be it? If your brother, right, or your sister, you know, turned out, yeah, might get, sometimes y'all might even get a little scrapping, but the point he's speaking about is love, right? Love one another. Because if you don't love one another, you'll never have the core, the core energy you need to overcome the enemy. Because when the enemy come at you, don't think that the enemies don't have their problems too. But you don't get to see it. Everybody gets to see the problem of the lost sheep. We expose it. We make it publicly. We put our business right out there in them streets. Right? And people say, love. The streets don't got no love. That's the point. But we, the disciples, should have some love. Love one another.